Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners. Welcome to Manifested e-learning platform. I'm your chemistry teacher, Mwane Kinyag. In this lesson, we'll be discussing board breaking and board formation in physical and chemical processes. By the end of this lesson, you should understand board breaking and bond formation. I want to give you some examples, starting with physical processes. If you remember, in our previous lessons, we talked about endothermic and exothermic reactions. To illustrate endothermic reaction, we used ammonium nitrate, where when you mixed ammonium nitrate with water, there was formation of ammonium nitrate solution. That was endothermic reaction. Then in exothermic reaction, when we mixed sodium hydroxide with water, we got a solution of sodium hydroxide. This shows that bonds were broken and new ones formed so that you can form that sodium hydroxide solution in exothermic reactions and ammonium nitrate solution in endothermic reactions. Let me show you in form of equations. Ammonium nitrate. It's a solid. When you dissolved in water, then you got ammonium nitrate solution. So this is ammonium nitrate solid. Then water is a liquid. Then we get aqueous ammonium nitrate which is a solution. Then the other one was sodium nitrate, sodium hydroxide, it dissolved in water. We got a solution of sodium hydroxide. These are compounds, ammonium nitrate and sodium hydroxide are compounds. And atoms are held, all atoms, all elements, all compounds are made up of atoms. And these atoms are held together by chemical bonds. If you remember in Form 2, we talked about the five types of chemical bonds, which were ionic bonds, covalent bonds, metallic bonds, dative or coordinate bonds and hydrogen bonds. Ammonium nitrate and sodium hydroxide are held together by ionic bonds. If you place these solids in water, they are going to dissolve. Once they dissolve, you are leading to formation of solutions. So this means that you've broken the ionic bonds which were existing in ammonium nitrate solid and sodium hydroxide solid so that you can form their solutions. Meaning that these bonds have been weakened or they have been broken so that you can form new bonds in their solution. That is what is happening. So for any reaction to take place, for any reaction to take place, then bonds must be broken and new ones formed. Even on the pen I'm holding, this mark pen, that if, I'm hit, if I hit this mark pen, bonds are going to be broken. When these bonds are broken, new ones will be formed. That is what happens in a chemical reaction. So in any chemical reaction, then bonds will be broken and new ones will be formed. And that is what we are talking about. These are physical 
processes. I want to take you to chemical processes. Just before I start the chemical processes, I need to tell you that the reason why we are saying that these are physical processes is because you have gotten their solutions. You have gotten the ammonium nitrate solution and sodium hydroxide solution. These ones, you can evaporate the sodium hydroxide and ammonium hydroxide, getting sodium hydroxide solid and ammonium nitrate solids because water will have evaporated so you, it, it is an irreversible it's an irreversible reaction getting into chemical processes in exothermic reactions which we've just done previously in the last lesson we talked about methane this is the equation But when you burn methane, you are going to get carbon fogs and gas and water. So that is the chemical, the chemical equation. This is methane. Methane is held together by bonds we call covalent bonds. Oxygen is also held together by covalent bonds. For you to be able to form carbon dioxide and water, these covalent bonds of methane and oxygen needs to be broken so that you can form carbon dioxide and water. Carbon dioxide is a compound made up of carbon element and oxygen element. They are held together by a bond. Water is also a molecule made up of hydrogen and oxygen. Therefore, they are bonds, they are covalent bonds which are holding the two elements together. Therefore, bonds are broken in the reactants. These bonds, once they are broken, they create free atoms. These free atoms will now later combine in the formation of new bonds that will now form new bonds again so that you have these elements or these products which are formed like carbon dioxide and water in this example. This is just one example. Let me give you the second example which we gave as ethanol. Ethanol is a liquid. When you burn ethanol in air, then you also get carbon dioxide and water. So that was our equation. Again, when you burn ethanol, Ethanol is held together by covalent bonds. Oxygen, again, is also held together by covalent bonds. Then once these bonds are broken, then you form carbon dioxide and water as the only product. These are chemical processes because you cannot get back to the original substances because some products like gases, this carbon dioxide, will have already escaped into the atmosphere so you cannot get back the original substance. And that's why we are calling it a chemical process. So make sure that you know the difference between a chemical process and uh, a physical process. Generally, that's what happens. In bond formation, then you require heat so that bonds are broken. But for you to be able to break bonds, the covalent bonds in methane, you need heat. You need to apply heat so that you break the bonds in methane. So it means that bond breaking 
is now an endothermic reaction. It is a reaction which requires heat. You need some application of heat so that you are able to break these bonds. So bond breaking is an endothermic process. When it comes to bond formation, so as you form bonds, energy is evolved. So energy is evolved. Energy is evolved all released to the surrounding. So this bond formation is an exothermic reaction. Bond formation is an exothermic reaction because it leads to loss of heat to the surrounding. That is what you need to understand in this, that in bond, in bond breaking, it is an endothermic reaction, then in board formation, it is an exothermic reaction. Then remember what you said, that in an endothermic reaction, then energy, or well, the enthalpy change is positive, then in an exothermic reaction, the enthalpy change is positive. This board breaking and board formation, uh, our, our point of discussion in this lesson, can also be shown in melting and evaporation. Ice. You have ice which is water in solid form. When you heat this ice, you will form liquid. So liquid. When you heat this liquid, you'll get a gas. This is melting. And evaporation. So you're melting ice to get liquid. Then you'll melt, melt, uh, you're evaporating this liquid to get a gas. So in both processes, energy changes are involved. The energy change in this case is an endothermic, it's an endothermic kind of a reaction because you're applying heat so that you're able to break down the molecules, not molecules, but bonds in ice to get liquid. Then you break these bonds in liquid further to get a gas. Later, you may condense the gas to get a liquid. Then you may also freeze the liquid to get ice. So this process is condensation. And this process is freezing. So those two processes, which are condensation and freezing, those are bond formation. You are forming bonds because you are uniting the molecules of this water in a gas to form a liquid. Then you unite them further to form a solid. Therefore, melting and evaporation, you require to apply heat in breaking the bonds present. And in freezing and condensation, there is loss of heat in in bringing down all in uh, in uniting the molecules together that is very important you need to understand that uh, clearly so that's all about the bond breaking and bond formation so don't forget the physical processes and chemical processes and at least be able to give some examples and know why we are saying that this is a physical process and this is a chemical process. I will leave you with an assignment. 
the assignment is define find the following terms first one is bond breaking And the second is bond formation. Define the following terms. The so first one is bond breaking, and the second is bond formation. So ensure you've done those that assignment before we meet in the next lesson. Thank you for participating in this lesson. <laughs>